the, uh, the, the, the story we're going to talk about right now, which is about Keir Starmer saying things will get worse before they get better. This is his first major speech since entering number 10. But is the doom and gloom actually code for tax cuts? Uh, what's going on here? He's shard billions on his union paymasters. He's been accused of that. Certainly we've seen all those rises. We've seen the 15% that has gone to the um, to the, the uh, train drivers. We've seen the 22% rise that has gone to the junior doctors as well. And plenty of other unions queuing up to try to get an answer from Keir Starmer and Angela Rayner and certainly Rachel Reeves about what's happening. Anna Mikhailova is Deputy Political Editor of The Mail on Sunday. She wrote this story for them about things getting worse. It was, of course, 1997 when D. Ream, a great Northern Irish band, uh, came up with Things Can Only Get Better. That was played incessantly during that election. It's been played a bit more recently as well. Anna, are we just being prepared for what's going to happen on the 30th of October, do you think? I think we are. Um, I don't think it's just the 30th of October either. Um, I mean, I have to say, when that text dropped, uh, you know, the preview of the PM's big speech on Tuesday, yesterday in the office, um, it had lots of good, good quotes. I mean, he's got great, you know, as we would say in, in the industry, great language. He talks about um, the rot in the country, broken Britain, um, the things he needs to overhaul, as you say, the things are going to get worse. So as a journalist, I was delighted because there was lots to write about. Uh, but as a member of the public, perhaps a bit less so, because it wasn't exactly the most uplifting message to mm. read on a Saturday. He's also talked about the riots as well. He said years of Tory failure, including not having enough prison spaces, meant that dealing with this summer's riots was much harder than tackling the 2011 disturbances when he was Director of Public Prosecutions. He's also talked about some of the things that drove those riots in Keir Starmer's estimation. He did. I mean, um, he, he basically blames the rioters for trying to exploit the weaknesses in Britain. So he's, uh, he's both pinning the blame on the last government by saying that it, they've deteriorated everything so much since 2011, when, as you say, he dealt with the Tottenham riots um, as DPP. And he's saying that uh, certain people in society very much knew that when they went out looting, uh, trying to, you know, set things on fire and 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 yeah again i mean it's a strong message um he's very much saying that he is proud of the way he uh cracked down on those riots i think most of the public agrees with that uh but he's saying there's going to be more tough decisions to follow because the last thing he wants to do as a former dpp and a former uh lawyer is to be you know having to um release people early um free up prison places, but he's saying he's, he's, he's been compelled to do that because of the state of the country that he's been dealt. What are the Conservatives saying about this, Anna? The Conservatives are immediately saying, oh, this is all a warning for tax rises. Um, I, I, I notice you've asked the public to phone in and, and, and give their thoughts. Um, I mean, this is going to be the really big debate. Where exactly is Rachel Reeves going to put up costs and also make cuts because don't forget you don't even have to have tax rises you can just do things like scrapping the winter fuel allowance that's not technically a tax rise but it's going to make people a lot poorer yes certainly and uh, Stuart has been in touch on text and says when Keir Starmer says things will get worse he obviously doesn't include the unions in that statement and uh, to govern is to choose as we know but clearly there's anger in regard to these pay settlements that have been made and of course Rachel Reeves under pressure as you say over the winter fuel allowances that's right um, I thought he was very interesting on the, in this preview of this speech that we will see in full on Tuesday on the unions he, he completely defends his decision to, to award these big payouts um, the pay offers to the unions and but he describes it as I came in and I've settled these disputes and strikes um, that been, have been you know playing the country for so long but but of course he hasn't settled the strikes because as soon as he gave Aflef a 14% uh, percent pay offer way out uh, you know with, with, with no conditions within 48 hours they announced further strikes to come this autumn so I, I find it strange that he can think he can claim both that he's ended the strikes and fixed the problem, even though, you know, he's basically saying, oh, it costs a bit more, but it's worth it. Mm. Anna, thank you. Anna Mikhailova there. She's deputy political editor of The Mail on Sunday, and uh, her report is on page six of the of the paper today alongside Brendan Carlin. Um, thank you to everybody who's been in touch. Uh, Neil says, Keir Starmer did not crack down on the riots in Leeds, in Neil's opinion. Dawn say, in Chelmsford says, Morning, Peter. Like a lot of people, I'm fearful of what Starmer will do to our country. His parliamentary majority gives him dictator 
status. It's very worrying. Um, the pass thing is an interesting one. I wonder what people think of this. Do you care? Do you care that a, a donor has got a pass to Downing Street? Now, there's a lot. There has, of course, been a lot of cronyism from successive governments, conservative governments, of course. Loads and loads of times they put certain people into certain roles, give them taxpayer-funded jobs and jollies, and, and there's no there's no suggestion that the Tories weren't up to it. But in my time covering Westminster, sort of 15 years or so, and being in Westminster and working in Westminster, I don't think I've ever heard of a donor being given a pass. Now that Pat McFadden has said, Pat McFadden's the Chancellor of the Duchy of Lancaster, he says that that pass has now been revoked from Lord Ali. He's this um, sort of media mogul who had a pass for Downing Street. Is that something you care about? Is that something anybody really worries about? Certainly the Labour government think it's worrying enough to actually revoke it, but there we are. Let us know your thoughts on that as well, 0344 499 1000. Sue talking about the Conservatives says the Conservatives are done, they're out of touch and out of time Jane says since Starmer became PM it is worse than ever, of course it got, will get worse than him with him in Downing Street and Mick in Wallington says Will Reeves cancel Starmer's unique pension which was protected by a special bill in Parliament just for him, that's right, he did have a special piece of legislation just for his own pension and of course lots of people feel this way about the Conservatives, feel this way about really almost all politicians that they are just a different, a breed apart and if you have a special bill for your pension as Starmer had, are you really going to be someone who's in touch with a common man? Of course and, and woman, a lot of people made that criticism of Rishi Sunak as well with his millions and all the rest of it. Um, let's talk to Elliot Keck now, he is the Head of Campaigns at the Taxpayers Alliance. Elliot, thanks for your company this morning. I just wonder what you make of this with Keir Starmer saying things will only get worse before they get better. This do you think this is storing up or laying the groundwork, ruling the pitch, I suppose, for what may well happen in uh, in October with the budget? Well, uh, a very good morning, Peter. Good to be on the show with you. I think uh, it's really, really interesting. Uh, not something that new governments normally like to push, the idea that things are uh, in a terrible situation and also are only going to get worse. It's something, of course, that the Conservatives did, though, uh, to great effect in 2010 to 2015. And the real question is, is how are things going to get worse? And I think it's going to be a variety of tax rises. Exactly which tax, ri tax rises are not entirely clear yet, but it looks likely it'll be something along the lines of capital gains, pension relief, possibly inheritance tax. But I also wonder if potentially they're going to actually end up looking at national insurance. Yeah, it's interesting. I mean, they've ruled out national insurance. But then again, Rachel Reeves did say during the election, I have no plans to raise taxes on working people. But I mean, most working people pay all sorts of different taxes, even things like capital gains tax. So you think national insurance could be brought into this? I wonder as well on the, we're going to talk about later in the programme about the winter fuel allowance, whether a, a U-turn, a reversal on the winter fuel allowance might be on the cards as well. I think that would be good politics. What do you think, Elliot? Well, there's certainly enormous pressure for them to U-turn on, and uh, but the problem with U-turning on that is that's another one and a half billion pounds that they're going to have to find, which is going to simply mount the pressure on tax rises. And the problem is, is the more pressure you have on the public finances, the more you're going to have to start looking at the major uh, tax rises, things like capital gains tax, tax, excuse me, inheritance tax, pensions relief. These things aren't actually going to raise much money. In fact, capital gains tax rises are, are forecast to actually lose Treasury money under some uh, analysis by HMRC. So if you're actually going to start m making your life more difficult on the spending front, you will start to have to look at national insurance. So that might mean the uh, employee rate of national insurance, but that could certainly mean the employer rate of national insurance. That's the amount that the actual business pays itself. And that would probably be a way around this point about raising tax on working people. It'd be a terrible policy, but the politics of it might be a bit easier for Rachel Reeves. Yeah, it's a really, really interesting point um, that you make there, Elliot. And I suppose it's a matter of what people will take as well. You're at the Taxpayers Alliance. You want tax to be, uh, uh, well, taxes to be spent as efficiently as possible. If you had to put up a tax, if someone was shining a light in your eyes and uh, making a threatening gesture to you, Elliot, what tax w would you think would be fairest to increase? Well, Generally, most economists agree that VAT is the least harmful tax, uh, that removing VAT exemptions would be the uh, least harmful tax rise. The reason is that it doesn't really distort behaviour in the way that, for example, capital gains taxes or taxes on work or tax on, on investment distort behaviour. They discourage the uh, likelihood okay. of investing and uh, working. Uh, increasing VAT would be the least harmful, but ultimately, with the tax already at burden already at approaching an 80-year half. I don't think we should really be looking to raise any taxes. In fact, I think in an ideal world, we'd be looking at trying to uh, uh, cut taxes for yeah. in some areas. 
Yeah, I agree with you. I want taxes to be as low as possible. Elliot, thank you very much indeed, Elliot Keck there, Elliot, head of head of campaigns at the Taxpayers Alliance. Put my teeth in. Um, Anne says, uh, when Starmer says getting worse before getting better, I say for who? Terry in Slough says, hi Peter, in my opinion, the only growth industry under this Labour government will be poverty, says Terry. And Christine in Surrey says, With eight weeks, within eight weeks, this Labour government has militarised the police, politicised the judiciary and appear to be operating a two-tier system. Opened our borders ever wider, released dangerous criminals, labelled those who complain far right and locked them up. Controlling freedom of speech and movement is simply sowing the seeds for anarchy, says Christine in Surrey. Anne is in Western Super Mare. Uh, Anne, what do you make of this? What would you like to say about the Labour government's performance well, so far? Yeah, well, they made a big thing about singing and dancing about things are only going to get better. And they thought, well, that's a load of rubbish. Now, if they're telling us now that things are going to get worse before they're going to get better, you know they're going to get really bad. Uh, I mean, they've only been in power, what, four weeks? And... You know, yeah, but about eight weeks. But, but Anne, I wonder, at what point do we t say Labour needs to take responsibility? And at what point do you say, actually, the Conservatives are still to blame for some of these issues because they were in power for 14 years? Well, yes, uh, they're both to blame, really. But every new government that comes into power will always blame the other. They won't take responsibility for their own actions. And you knew the moment they were going to get in, they were going to raise taxes. I think they're going to do a lot more than raise taxes. I mean, this uh, riots that are going on. Do you know what? He thinks he's coming down, cracking down hard on them, and it's going to stop. I tell you what, if he goes on pushing the people at the bottom of the pile like he's doing, there's going to be more trouble in his streets because you can push people so far and they've had enough. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm absolutely dreading what's ahead of us to be honest and we've been told on that there will be tax rises in the budget uh what tax rises do you think there should be if any well <laughs> there there has to be a certain amount of tax rises i agree but giving these massive payouts to these big companies is really dividing the country even more i mean you've got a cake and you've got to divide the cake yeah. into pieces there's only certain amounts that can go to each person and it seems to me the people at the bottom of the pile are the ones that are suffering the most you take the pensioners right they ne they don't have a, a pension rise and it, in fact if well they've had, a, they've had a triple lock for quite a long yeah, time well you know what but if they've got a small pension and my husband has a small pension and i mean a small pension then that counteracts that because they take it away in tax mm. um uh, and also pensioners are on a fixed income, so it's not as if most of them anyway can yeah. go out and work no. as well. Yeah. And every day I or every week I go out shopping, I can see the prices in the shops rising, rising higher and higher. Yeah. And obviously the, the, the bills for the fuel are, are going to come in and uh, they're going to get higher. Well, you're right, and, and that's going to go up. Uh, energy bills going up £149 from October just as the winter approaches and just as that winter fuel allowance is taken away from many pensioners.